lot of us have a difficult time envisioning what a post-racial America would be like. I know a lot of us like to think that we've conquered our race issues, but we have a long way to go. But what did MLK think about it back in the day? Let's take a look. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Because I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. And when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Go ahead. I just have to say, I mean, it, it, that always brings a, an emotional response, a guttural uh, response. But I also have to say that uh, we as Americans have moved lightning speed compared to other countries with regard to class struggle, race struggle, gender struggle. Uh, so I, I want to give credit where credit is due. That is so recent in our history experience and we have achieved so much more than anyone could have possibly thought. We have a lot further to go, but compared to other countries, we've really achieved a lot in a very brief amount of time. There's another way to look at that though. Yes, you could say there's been a lot of progress for some blacks, me and you, for example, and people like Obama, there are some inner city neighborhoods where 90% of the young black men, let me repeat that statistic, are in jail, on probation, or on parole at some point in their lives. 90%, your hair is on fire as a community. Your hair is on fire. That is worse than before Brown versus Board of Education. We didn't have, we weren't warehousing and toxic and, and dumping like toxic human waste our, a whole generation and hobbling one or two generations. We also, so had, a, is, we also had a stronger moral uh, fortitude within ourselves. I, the black I, community, uh, the the black community d did not champion and, and place on a public display uh, young women uh, having children out of wedlock. There was a stronger community sense, a stronger moral sense at a certain point of time in American history that we have to acknowledge. We, we now have reality shows across racial lines, but we have reality shows that champion uh, young women having children without a, a reasonable support system. That is not going to cut it for, for, uh, for this country whatsoever. My concern is that plays right into a poverty of culture argument. That is Michael Harrington's going back to the early 1960s. It informed the Reagan administration. It informed Clinton. That's the reason he took scissors to the social welfare net that FDR put in place. It informs a lot of thinking that personal responsibility approach, and I think it's very pernicious to go that way. I think way. personal responsibility and other uh, aspects of life it can, can work hand in hand, but we need to speak, maybe we need to have another honest dialogue about personal responsibility. So right, but would you not, if we do, uh, would you not say that uh, growing up, uh, being born into, the, into, a, into a, a bad circumstance, requires more personal responsibility than, I think it does, because I think as a white, I was born into upper middle class. Personal responsibility, it's like, well, so much is taken care of for me that it, not as much personal responsibility is required as if I was born into lower middle class or lower don't class. You, don't you guys feel like we're kind of squashing opportunities in the country for those who are born into bad situations? And that goes beyond, you know, uh, you know, gender or, or race, it, it, it has a lot to do with the fact that now we are getting rid of the very programs that the wealthy took advantage of to get wealthy. And so when people make these arguments about picking yourself up from the bootstraps or working really hard and stop being lazy, it's really hard to believe those arguments when you see that our public education system is being privatized, when, when you see that we have this school to prison pipeline where we're incarcarating young people. You, you, I believe, mm -hmm. I certainly believe that you can't discount 
discount that argument. Uh, it, one does not cancel out the other. Mm -hmm. But um, again, it's, it's another issue of one having an... One can be overemphasized to the detriment of the other, and that's what's been think, going I, on. I don't think, this, I don't think the self... I don't think the picking your up, uh, uh, self up by the bootstrap is, is the pre predominant argument. Well, before I really you, don't. Before it you is among our politicians. Yeah, before you wag your finger at me as an unemployed black youth in the inner city who's looking, who has stomach rumblings, crumbs, roaching, and rats, and living in a mouse hole about personal responsibility, you provide some kind of schooling, now, unlike Crenshaw Public High School in 2006, lost its accreditation. If I, as a student, I played the personal responsibility game, did everything I was supposed to do, when I was ready to graduate, my, my diploma would be worth toilet tissue in the admissions process because it was coming from an unaccredited high school. That's what what personal responsibility gets you in the real world? Yeah, the other thing about personal responsibility. But you're not canceling out personal responsibility. I'm saying it's, it's way overstated. But you're not canceling I'm it. I'm not completely canceling there it. There you out. go. I am. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. Okay, okay, you're real bad. No, I'm not canceling it. What I'm saying about personal responsibility is you, when pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, all that stuff is like, you can be anything in this country. But your life's gonna suck but for you can't thirty-five be, but years. You, but that's another. Unless you're, that's it, another falsehood. But, you can't be anything you want in I this agree. country. But what I'm saying is, you can get loans. You can work two jobs. You can work eighty hours a week. You can take the bus. You can do all this stuff. That's what I'm saying. Your quality of life is gonna be super low. But you can you can advance. But your life's gonna suck. If you're white and upper middle class. You can be anything in this country, and your life's not going to suck because you're already born with this inherent because advantage. Because of the white privilege, yes. absolutely. There's we no question. There's Correct. no question about that. I don't need that. to get loans because my my de my parents You'd be are rich. You'll be able to get it from. Yeah, your you can just get it. It's like the Mitt Romney thing. Yeah. Ask and your and parents by the way, for ten grand. That, that my parents don't have ten grand, Mitt Romney. Right. <laughs> well, and that look and that trend <laughs> is quickly fizzling out. I mean, college is becoming so increasingly expensive yeah. that it doesn't even yeah. matter what your race is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's it's out of reach for upper middle class individuals at this point because of the fact that it's so expensive. You gotta take out hundreds of thousands of dollars in loans just for an undergraduate degree, which isn't even enough to get you a decent job at this point. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? And then so you're gonna, it's gonna take 25 to 30 years to pay that back. Exactly. And it's worthless. Along with other Dead. Yeah, my one concern about that's if you want to ball out too. I mean, right. if you want to exactly. party, you're gonna run the credit card and hey, get some hey, nice hey, outfits. Yeah. You understand? Go <laughs> ahead, bro. My, my one concern, my one concern about the MLK speech is the way his speech has been interpreted is as color blindness, as he's advocating color blindness. It may have hurt it, Trayvon yeah. Martin at his trial yeah. that there was a color blind yes, approach right. taken by the prosecution. You look at the book A Time to Kill, mm -hmm. or or or, mm -hmm. or somebody like Clarence Darrow who's mm -hmm. defending Ocean Sweet back in the 20s, a black doctor mm -hmm. who shot in self-defense a white guy. They they got into race. They got into racial role reversal. They said, reverse the races here and ask yourself, right. with the role, with the racial races reversed, racial role reversal, would, would your response be different? If it is, then justice requires that you give this black they made person the, the, as much justice as you would a white. The mistake they made in Florida was to deny the fact that this was a race-based shooting. Had they started from that honest point, then maybe things would have been different. But in my opinion, and in probably the opinion of the majority of people of color in this country, that was uh, uh, racially based. So let me uh, play a devil's advocate and ask you to explain why you feel that race was a strong component of this case. Uh, just look at the circumstances. Just play a game in your own head. If you reversed it, if you reversed it, if George Zimmerman was African American and Trayvon Martin was uh, uh, not African American and maybe Caucasian, uh, the whole situation would have been different. And a perfect example of that would be Marissa Alexander, Correct. who is also from from Florida, and you know she had got gotten a restraining order from her husband. Uh, but she went back to the home that they lived in to get some of her stuff. She believed that her husband was away, but he was not. He was unfortunately in the home. They got into a violent altercation, and she had run to her car to get away, but she realized she did not have her keys. So she had a, uh, a gun, which she had a permit for. She got, grabbed the gun and shot a warning shot to deter her husband from basically beating her up. And she got sentenced to 20 years in prison for set for firing that warning shot. She didn't even kill anyone, okay? 
and she's going to serve 20 years in prison because of it. And I hear the media, they like to twist the story and make it seem like, oh, no, she got in her car, she could have gotten away. She didn't have her keys, okay? What is she going to do? She's supposed to defend herself, but it's interesting. And her children were and in her, the house. And her children were in the house. But it's interesting because when it comes to a white person, it's self-defense. When it comes to a black person, well, they're just violent and dangerous. we got to lock them up and incarcerate well, them. That, that answer, you answered the question. I know, sorry. I try, I try not to get into rants <laughs> on this why show. Why are we here? I know, I'm sorry. Come on, what I'm sorry. Why is a waste of my time? Just, sorry. I can eat a salad right now. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, well, now look, I'm talking I, this stupid racial <laughs> stuff. I got an adult diaper on. I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs>